Mm -hmm. Welcome back to CBC News Sunday. This week, the United Nations came out with its annual rankings of the best places to live. Norway was number one. Canada was number six, way down at number 176. Second to last, in fact, was the West African country of Sierra Leone. It was the scene of an especially brutal civil war throughout the 1990s, a conflict that killed tens of thousands of people, left many more maimed and traumatized, and the trauma goes on. We want to introduce you to a Canadian who tried to help Sierra Leone's people vanquish the demons of their past. He's using the weapon that he knows best, the camera, a very unique form of therapy. Sonia Varma has this story. Maurice Henri lives a life of pictures. It's his craft, his passion, his profession. And the profession's been good to him. So Henri is giving back through an ambitious project in Sierra Leone. The vision that, that I had with this and I wanted to prove, I've always believed that art, visual arts, uh, art in general can be a therapeutic tool. Henri traveled to the post-war country armed with cameras. In a photography workshop, he brought together former child soldiers and victims of war, two sets of people with serious emotional scars. My goal was to have them, because these people, although they can speak, they cannot express because they are all traumatized by the war on whatever level. So a form of expression for them is impossible. I wanted them to see the camera and use the actual camera as a tool for their voice. It was a delicate project on various levels. Accompanying Henri was a local psychologist to help with the therapy side of his phototherapy workshop. He also brought along a crew of three young New Brunswickers, amateur photographers Henri hoped to mentor. They included his right-hand man, Justin Serret, and videographer, Renel Leblanc. Neither had visited Africa. Day one on the ground, Henri realized there were hurdles to helping. He would act as teacher, confidant, therapist, not only to the workshop participants, but also to his young crew who were out of their comfort zone. It was overwhelming because I've never seen anything like it, so, you know, it was a little bit of a culture shock. When we first landed, it was actually dark. We landed at night and there's no power, so you couldn't see anything around you. And I must say, I was a little bit in shock. At first, uh, I saw some pretty serious fear and doubts and concern amongst them, especially Justin right away. Uh, I know Justin very well and he's a very sensitive young man. And uh, so I saw, the, the, I saw it in his face. They all snapped out of it, but Henri was left to face another obstacle, the mistrust of the ex-child soldiers and victims. One of the older women, I call her the mouthpiece, uh, because she was very vocal. And uh, she flew into us, mainly me, uh, like you wouldn't believe, like very pointed, straight questions in front of the whole group. Why are you here? Why are you doing what you're doing? Just take these two fingers here and these two fingers here and do that. Henri is a staunch believer in what he calls positive photography. Even among people who've witnessed the worst kinds of atrocities, Henri's photos showcase people with dignity, with vibrancy, with intelligence. But he knows the grittier pictures sell. The people of Sierra Leone know it too. That's why they don't consider the camera their friend. During the war and after the war, uh, all these people uh, were exploited and they feel exploited. They told me that on numerous occasions. What would happen is a lot of uh, photographers, media people, whatever, would come in from North America with their fancy equipment and especially the photography where they would say, you know, like, show me how pathetic you are with no arms and let me photograph you. And when we came in with our cameras, and again, being from North America, being white, we stood out, instantly we had a wall. They had to show them they weren't there to exploit, that they had no vested interest, although they did have a big name sponsor. And while the ball caps and t-shirts did help warm the group up, so did the sensitivity of the young crew. We first gave them the cameras, they looked at them, felt them, examined the thing, and then 
they just loved it and wanted to learn more and more and more. Most of them, after the courses were done, they would like, pfft, they would leave. They were just so excited to go take pictures. During the three-week trip, Henri organized two workshops. Okay. Participants were given a crash course on camera basics. Okay, hold that shot. Composition, lighting, how not to cover the viewfinder with their finger. Slowly, Henri began to see small but remarkable changes. The groups began mingling, women with moves with perpetrators. He visibly saw people loosen up, like this young woman who for two days sat and stared at the floor. And I've never in my entire life seen such sadness in a person's face. And she couldn't look at us, she couldn't talk, she didn't say one word. But she locked on to this project like you wouldn't believe. She took the camera and she went out and she photographed and she, she really did it. And I could start seeing smiles. She was looking at us once in a while and she'd smile. And when I showed one of her pictures and I critiqued her photograph and talked about the picture and showed certain things that made her feel good, I could actually see the little smiles happening. The groups were given a final assignment to shoot and document a day in their life. They could photograph friends, family, homes, plants, anything. They had to tell us visually, without speaking, without words, how they felt and saw and lived their life. And man, did the floodgates open at that point. The woman with downcast eyes shared with Henri how, as a young girl, she'd been kidnapped by rebels and locked in a small room with no windows. And she did not see the light of day. She did not see the sunlight. And she was not let out of that room for nine years. And every day, she was victim of rape, abuse, name it. Henri also heard from the woman who had drilled him at the beginning, the one he affectionately referred to as mouthpiece. She confided how her husband was shot by rebels and how she hid in a ditch with her two little kids and she, uh, she stayed there with no food, no nothing, and had nowhere to go in total fear. And what she did, or what she ended up having to do, she took her two children, clutched them to her chest, held them until both of them died of starvation. That woman who was so full of suspicion, of mistrust, who demanded to know what Henri could do for them, became his hero. I was really so impressed with her because on the second or third day she says, I need to speak again, and I thought, uh-oh, I'm in trouble again, uh, because she did challenge me. And she expressed uh, her gratitude for us to see them as people, not as victims, not as soldiers, as people, caring people. And she convinced the group to start uh, an association. And while we're gone, while we're here in our comfortable homes, while we're here, they are working there to help and get the kids involved in understanding not only photography, to draw, to write poetry, to play music and all that. And they, are, they can't wait for us to go back to show us what they've done with the children in their community. And they will be going back. Henri has made a five-year commitment. Now he just has to raise the funds. He also plans to return with this same young crew and despite their early apprehension, they're in. I love it. I'd go again any day. The cameras were supplied by his corporate sponsor, but Henri funded this three-week trip himself. It cost him $30,000. Well worth it, he says. But if Henri ever did have any doubts, they were erased on his last day. They were thrown a goodbye party when that young woman, remember the one who always looked down, who had a good reason to fear men? She called Henri over. She did this to me and actually looked at me right in the eye. And she came to me and she gave me a really strong hug, held me really tight and she whispered very gently in my ear. She just whispered, uh, thank you, don't forget me. That's when Henri knew that photography as a form of expression can go a long way in making people open up. That's when he knew he'd keep going back. Sonia Varma, CBC News, Moncton.
We should tell you that Maurice Henri and his team are actually still developing the pictures taken by the people they gave cameras to in Sierra Leone. We'll try to put some of them up on our website for you in the weeks ahead. Also, still to come.